Up until now, we've been learning to factorize trinomials where the coefficient of the squared term in the expression is a 1. We're now going to have a look at what happens when the coefficient of the squared term is a number other than 1. So for example, in number 1, we are looking to have a coefficient of the first term of 3. And the first term in your quadratic trinomial is arrived at by multiplying the two first terms in your brackets. And in order to get a 3y squared, it means that we must have had a 1y multiplied by a 3y. Only a 1y multiplied by a 3y will give you a 3y squared as your first term. We also know that the last term of the trinomial we get by multiplying the two last terms in the bracket. And to get 20, those last terms could have possibly been a 1 and a 20, a 2 times a 10, or a 4 times a 5. And it's our job to work out which pair of factors will we will use so that we get a positive 7 in the middle term. But because we have this coefficient of 3 in front of the y squared, it's not that straightforward because if we just think about the little test that we would do to see what our factors are, you would cross multiply when you write them underneath each other because that will then give you an idea of what your outers will be and what your inners will be. And because you are multiplying this one here by a 3y, it's going to no longer just be a factor of 20 that's going to determine the 7y. It's That 3 is going to influence how you get to the 7y. So in, in this case, you often have to do some trial and error to work out which factors of 20 will be correct. So I'm just going to um, choose, uh, for example, uh, the factors of 2 and 10 and test whether or not those could have been my factors. Now, even though it's trial and error, in order to save yourself a little bit of time, think a bit about whether, where, where it's logical to put the numbers. If you want to add up to a positive 7, and just before we get there, if we just think about this minus, that minus tells us that we must have taken a plus times a minus. So we're looking for two numbers that have a difference of 7. If one's positive and one's negative, we're looking for a difference. And if I then put the 10 down here, I'm going to have 3y times 10, which is 30y, which is far too big, I think, to ever give us 7. So I'm going to put the 10 here and the 2 here so that I can maybe save myself a step. So 3y times 2, we'll come back and look at the signs in a second, is 6y. And y times 10 is 10y. Now, if you think about 10 and 6, if one has to be positive and one has to be negative, they will never have a difference of 7. If you have positive 10y minus 6y, you get a positive 4y. If you have negative 10 plus 6y, you get negative 4y. So clearly, 2 and 10 are not going to combine to give us the positive 7 in the middle. So we can um, discount that, that possible solution. So let's move on to another pair of factors. Let's try 4 and 5. So 4 and 5. Okay, 3y times 5 is 15y, and y times 4 is 4y. Again, 4y and 15y, it doesn't matter which one I make positive and which one I make neg negative, they don't have a difference of 7. So that means that 4 and 5 in that combination is not going to work. But let me just try and put the 5 and the 4 the other way around. So if we put the 5 in the bracket with the 3y and the 4 in the bracket with the y. 3y times 4 is 12y y times 5 is 5y. 5 and 12 do have a difference of 7, so it looks as if we found the right combination. We want them to add up to positive 7y, so we, we need our bigger of the two coefficients to have the positive and the smaller to have the negative. That means we must have multiplied y by a minus 5 to get negative 5y, and we must have multiplied 3y by positive 4 to get positive 12y. So that means that my factors are 3y minus 5 and y plus 4. Okay, if we look at the second one here, this one is a little bit more complex because 15, the first term of 15, we could have actually had it as 1 times 15 or we could have had it as 3 times 5. If we want to think about our lasts now, 10 could have been 1 times 10 or it could have been 2 times 5. The sign on the 10 is positive, and remember we multiplied things together to get the 10, so it must have been a plus times a plus, or a minus times a minus. 
In order to decide which one it is, we look at the middle term. We know that we add the constants to get the middle term. So it must the only two numbers that have the same signs that can ever add to give you a minus must be a minus and a minus. Okay, so we must have had a minus times a minus over here in order to get um, the two to add up to a negative over there. All right, if we now do our test. So remember it's trial and error, but oftentimes it's useful to pick the factors that are often smaller. It's just a feel for it because the 31 is, is not that big in relation to three and five and two and five once we found their products. So I'm going to test three A and five A, and I'm going to test five and two. Okay, I know that they both need to be minuses, so I can immediately fill that in. 3a times negative 2 is negative 6a, 5a times negative 5 is negative 25a, and negative 25 subtract 6 is negative 31a. That is my middle term, so I was quite um, fortunate there. I, I got the factor straight away. So 3a minus 5 times 5a minus 2 will give you the trinomial 15a squared minus 31a plus 10. All right. In your homework book, there are some examples for you to try on your own, so I'd like for you to pause the video and try these. All right, number one, 7x squared plus 18x plus 8. The factors that give you that trinomial are 7x plus 4 and x plus 2. If you want to just check or test, 7x plus 4 and x plus 2, we can test our outers will be 14x and we can test our inners will be 4x and they add up to 18x. Please be aware that even if you had the 7 and the x and the 4 and the 2, the 7x and the plus 4 have to be in the same bracket and the x plus 2 have to be in the same bracket. If you put them in the other bracket, if you change them around, if you had the 7x plus 2 and the x plus 4, when we do our little cross, 7x times 4 is 28 and 2x times 2 is 2x, we see that we no longer get the 18x. So that is not the correct solution. Number 2, 5x squared minus 6x minus 8. The correct factors are 5x plus 4 and x minus 2. Again, if you just want to check that your outers and your inners are correct there, we write them underneath each other. That's our outers times together there is 10x sorry, negative 10x, because it's 5x times negative 2, and x times 4 is 4x. 4x subtract 10x is negative 6x. All right, in number 3, a little bit more complex, because there's two different combinations to give us 15. You could have had 1 and 15, or 3 and 5, and there's quite a few factors of 24. So you might have found with this one that it took you a few tries to get the correct factors, which would have been 3k plus 4, and 5k minus 6. 